Long-term profitable betting and trading is all about winning more than you lose. I think that makes sense, doesn't it? But there's a number of ways that you can do that. I've done a video specifically on how you can gain a positive expectancy. But I received a question this week, which is all about taking a loss. How do you take a loss? Um, and why do you do it that way? And so on. Because a lot of stuff that I see doesn't really describe that process particularly well. And a lot of betting and trading systems I see are a, a little bit arbitrary in terms of the way that they ask you to take a loss. And some of them actually recommend that you chase it, which is absolute madness. But there is a structure to the way in which you can look at losses and that will help you come to terms with them and that will get you profitable longer term. Because if you can take a loss when one is necessary, but avoid one when it's unnecessary, then obviously that will make a significant contribution to your profitability in the long term. So in this video, let's have a look at how you should approach a loss, how, they, how the market influences how you would take that loss. Uh, but more importantly, exactly what I do when I'm looking at a position that I think is about to go wrong. I've been successfully betting and trading for over two decades. If you want more videos like this and you want me to describe more of what I do, then give us a like. If you want to talk to like-minded people, visit the Bet Angel Forum where you can do exactly that, but also visit our website where you can download a free trial of Bet Angel. So you should always be looking at your trading data because it would give you the confidence to be able to take a loss. The mistake that a lot of people make is that they have a loss in a particular market. They try and recover the loss maybe in the market. They make it worse and therefore they like double stakes on the next market and then try and recover that position. But that's, you know, you're going to head into a giant great big rabbit hole. Are you going to influence the outcome of your trade? You're letting one trade influence another and it's just an absolute hell hole, basically. You can't, um, you can't do that. Each trade has to be dealt with in isolation. You look at one market, you trade it to the best of your ability, that market ends. It hopefully is a profit, but if it's a loss, you just ignore it and you move on and you trade the next market to the level, uh, to the best of your ability and the next market and the next one. And you keep on doing this particular process. Your trade shouldn't influence the next market that you're active on on. And, and this, you know, very often happens. But one of the ways that you can come to terms with that is if you keep all of the data, uh, how much you win, how much you lose, what your strike rate is, all of that sort of data, um, then that will define your edge. And let's say, for example, uh, and this is totally arbitrary, but I'm doing this as an example, you have a 1% edge and you have a bank of £100. If you can trade that £100 through the market with a 1% edge, then at the end of 100 trades, you would have doubled that bank. But of course, along the way, you're going to have some markets where you gain 2%, where you lose 1%, gain 5, lose 10, gain 20, lose 5. That's how those results are going to come in. But ultimately, if you know over the very long term that it's generally profitable, that will make it easier to take a loss when a loss does occur. Because you go, damn, I messed up, that didn't work, something went wrong. But it doesn't matter because I'm focused on this very long term goal. That's ultimately the way that you should sort of conceptualise and understand and use losses. You shouldn't let it influence your individual trade. And if you've made a loss on one market, you shouldn't try and do something in the next market to overcome that. You made a loss, that's history now. Focus on the next market and try and do the best you can within that market. Because if you've got an edge and a trading plan, you've got nothing to worry about. So one of the things that I recommend you don't do is set a fixed stop position within the market. You don't sort of say if it's going to go five against me, if it's going to go eight against me or two or whatever. Um, that's a difficult thing to do. And the main reason for that is that every market is different. If we look at today's football, if we look at the cricket, the tennis, the racing, each market will be subtly different. And if we look at today's racing, we can actually see that we've got maidens on there, novices. We've got some group racing. They're all going to behave slightly differently. And even if you have the same race type, such as two maidens, you could have horses that are unraced. That market will be completely different from a maiden where the horses are just useless. Basically, they've run seven times, can't win a damn thing. So they will shove them in one low quality maiden. And the same sort of thing applies, you know, when we look at the structure of the market as well. So if you get slightly shorter prices within a market, that will make the market more volatile than when you get much larger prices. So if you've got a market that you think is going to trade in a wide traded range, you'd have a wide stop loss. And if you think a market's going to trade in a narrow traded range, you can afford to pull that in a little bit tighter. So when you approach individual markets, you would expect them all to behave differently. And therefore, you would expect 
to apply a different sort of stop or a position where you would choose to cut out that position. However, there is a little bit of a fundamental problem with the way in which you do this because of the way that the market can behave. So let's look at a pretend market. We're going to have an opening price on one side of the market. Uh, it could be a time related entry, it could be price related, score related, it could be anything really in all honesty. Um, but basically we draw a dot at the open of this particular market. And then over on the other side, we're going to have the exit point that could occur within a range of positions. It could end up, it could end up down, or it may actually go absolutely nowhere at all. And if we draw a line between um, the entry and the exit point, that gives us our trade. Now, this is exactly how the market does not work, because when you actually look at a trading market or a betting market, you will see the price meander around all over the place. It will rise, it will fall. Sometimes it will do the complete opposite of what you want, but the, the market follows a meandering path. So if you set an arbitrary stop in the market, say we sort of say, we're gonna cut out if this position goes five, eight, 10 ticks against us. The problem that you face is that the market could very often start at one particular point, meander downwards, hit your stop trigger, and then miraculously turn around and head in the other direction and everything would have been fine. But because you cut out for a loss, you've actually taken a loss in a market where you could have had a profit. Um, and you know, this can occur in many different ways. So when we draw these simple lines that point the start of the market and the end of the market, and the path that they follow, what you tend to find is the market meanders all the way through that. And if you're trying to achieve something and the market keeps going against you, but then keeps coming back and sort of teases you, this is known um, as what they would call a whipsaw. I saw a brilliant example this week. I didn't see it, somebody else saw it and posted it. So uh, thank you, Mark. I have shamelessly nicked your um, graph that, that you so uh, kindly spotted this week and, and published on Twitter. I have taken that from you, I apologize, but it was a great example. And you can see the problem with the whipsaw is that very often it could trigger your stop repeatedly. So if you went into the trade and you um, decided to take your position out of the market at a set limit, you would have taken it out repeatedly in this particular market. Whereas if you had just left your trade in the market, you would have been absolutely fine. So my approach to taking a loss within the market is not to look specifically at a set amount uh, you know, in terms of like X number of ticks, five, eight or 10. I will look at the average traded range because a big traded range will mean I need to be a little bit more flexible in uh, how much leniency I give the market. And obviously a small traded range will allow me to uh, be a little bit tighter in terms of the trades that I'm going to put through. Uh, but I think there's a much, much better way of managing a potential losing position. So every time you open a trade, you should have an idea of, of why you're doing that. I mean, that makes sense, doesn't it? But you often see me in videos talk about why I'm interested in the market and why I'm entering at a certain point and what I expect to happen. And you'll see me put the closing trades in so I can indicate where I think it's going to be going and stuff like that. But basically, on every market that you're active, you should know exactly why you're getting in. And this is the key to being able to minimise your losses. So if I was looking at a football match, I would be profiling the number of goals I expect, who's going to score them. And of course, you need a certain number of shots to score those goals and so on. So as the match gets underway, you can tell if you were right or not. Similar in tennis, um, you know, if you're looking to go against a favourite um, and certain things happen, then you can begin to get an idea as to whether that trade is going to work out or not. And when we're looking at trading pre off horse racing, for example, I will go into a market and you would have seen me do this on the videos and talk specifically about why I'm entering at that particular point. And that will narrow down to specific strategies and specific markets for certain reasons. So I will have a checklist that will basically determine if I'm going to get into a market. And if I have a checklist of, say, 10 items, if I score a 10 out of 10, then I will increase my stakes because that means that I'm almost certain uh, about what is about to happen within that market. But if I have a market that scores three out of 10, then I will basically um, scale back my stake appropriately. That's a great way of you know, cutting your losses, basically adjusting your stake according to your confidence within the market. But have a think about it. When we enter the market, we've got this checklist of sort of 10 items. So it could be that, you know, we've seen the price come in, we're expecting it to bounce. It's near a crossover, so it makes sense to lay it. We're seeing support from another runner over here. And so we jump in to the market at that particular point. From that point onwards, you know, maybe the market immediately responds to where we're going. 
but maybe it doesn't. Maybe it just sort of meanders a bit and so on. At that point, you sort of say, well, what's changed? Are those items that I looked at immediately, um, you know, are they still there? Or is there some deterioration within those? Because if they're still there, then you may as well hold your trade, even if it goes against you temporarily. You see me hold positions in the market like this. And the reason that I'm doing that is because the fundamental reasons for getting involved in the trade are still intact. But imagine that we had a trade that was marked a 10 out of 10, but suddenly all of those features started falling away. Then what I would actually do on that particular occasion is begin to exit my trade. So rather than going for an arbitrary stop loss, you know, five, 10 ticks or something like that, I'm scoring each race as I enter it or the trade, uh, depending upon what sport I'm active in. Um, and then if all of those conditions for entering the trade are still intact, I hold my position. But if they start to deteriorate, then I close my position and I just try and do it at the best price possible. Now, I have actually done a video where I contrasted two trades that I was doing for exactly the same reason and one worked and one didn't. Um, so uh, have a look at that video if you're interested in seeing this process in action. But fundamentally, what I'm doing is I'm scoring the market according to a list of criteria. And if those are still intact, I'll hold my position, even if it goes against me temporarily. But if those conditions begin to break down, then I will exit that trade. And that could be at the current price. It could be a small profit. It could be break even and hopefully a small loss. But it doesn't always work like that. Um, so, yeah, my losses are, are taken in that particular manner. And if you look at a lot of the videos that I've produced, you'll hear me talking through those items that I have within that checklist. And the problem that you will have when you first start trading is you may draw up that checklist, but when you're actively trading the markets, you may not be able to keep track of all of those items or understand specifically um, how that influences the trade and which you're on at that particular moment in time. So you'll probably be behind the curve. And I suggest you record videos, look at the market, you understand how the market behaved and why it behaved that way. That will allow you to be able to sort of practice and understand exactly what you're looking at. And that will speed up your processing of it. Because I have a checklist. It's just in my head. I can turn up to market. I look at the market. I identify what I want to do and why. And I can tell when that has started to break down. But that's a semi-automated process for me simply because I've been doing it for so long. If you're just starting out, you may have to go through that process manually. And that will make you a bit slow to start with. But yeah, if you want to minimize your losses, then the best way to do it, in my opinion, is scale your stakes according to the confidence that you have within the trade itself. Come up with a checklist of items that you have for entry. And if that checklist begins to break down, uh, then necessarily that is your cue to exit or at least minimize your trade. Perhaps reduce the stakes by half, gradually push the money back into the market and manage your position that way. I don't tend to use an arbitrary stop because arbitrary stops tend to get triggered too often and I'm more focused on exactly what's going on within the market, why I got involved in it. And if that begins to break down, then that will prompt my exit from the market. And that is the way that I recommend that you manage your losses.